when you've got it right, you see your, your protein moving and changing shape and your score rushes up, your own player name rushes up through the ranks and uh, yeah, your adrenaline starts. It's like being a scientist when you get a paper published. <laughs> That 10% of euphoria is supposed to take you through the 90% of banging your head against a brick wall. But... Well, pe people put a huge amount of energy into um, playing games on computers, so I think projects like this can channel that energy into solving real-world problems, and uh, that's a way in which everyone can contribute that really hasn't been there before. I'm Suzanne Helitsky and I'm an administrator in Manchester and my folding gaming name is also Suzanne. Hello, I'm Charlie. I'm a bench technician and in my spare time I play folding. I used to be number two in the world. My gaming tag is Charlie Fort's Conscience and I'm a member of the Contenders. It's essentially a 3D jigsaw puzzle. You're given a, a protein which comprises of a, a backbone and individual side chains and by moving these around, changing the interactions, your score either goes up or down. Scientists are interested in working out the three-dimensional structures of proteins because uh, they help understand how the proteins carry out their jobs, what they do inside cells. And the, the principle behind the prediction of protein structures on a computer is that we've known for a long time that all the information needed to determine the structure of a protein is in the amino acid sequence of the protein. So from genome sequences, we can translate those into amino acid sequences using the genetic code, and now we have this amino acid sequence. Turns out that the structure that proteins fold to is almost always the lowest energy structure for that amino acid sequence. So the structure prediction problem then is finding the lowest energy structure for that amino acid sequence. And the reason it's hard is that there's so many different possible configurations. The big advantage that a human has is they can look at a complicated thing like a big protein and sort of zoom in on the regions that probably most need to be reworked. And we give them visual cues. The regions that are high in energy locally are red, and so they sort of stand out that, well, you need to do something here. To start with a, with a protein that, that is so misshapen, it's ugly and it's red. And to work through that to a beautifully streamlined structure where it's symmetrical and things are tucked in and nothing is hanging out um, of, of the sides. Yeah, that, that is sort of the goal and, and that's what I like doing, to, to sort of help it in some ways, to, to, to sort of be what it should be. A really good folded player, I think, needs a number of skills. Problem solving is obviously one of them. I think a slightly addictive personality um, a little bit of stubbornness thrown in and a little bit of luck on top. You don't necessarily need to have a scientific background to play, you just need to know what works and what doesn't. And you can learn that within the game itself. I'm an administrative worker in the rehab team. I'm, I'm just answering telephones, uh, working on uh, bespoke computer programs, interacting with staff. It's very repetitive. When I go home, I become a different person. <laughs> I just like to measure myself against something. And it's given me something that my everyday life hasn't given me. It's, it's to just use abilities I didn't know I had. For me, it's a guilty pleasure. And yet, here I am involved in something that has real relevance in the scientific world. It makes you feel very proud of what you do, which is essentially a, a little hobby. You can imagine where you come home in the evening and you can either, either stay up all night playing Halo or you can be designing a, an HIV vaccine with people all around the world. I mean, you can, which would you be happier saying you did when you went into work in the morning? People out there are discovering not only uh, alternative protein structures, but 
new approaches to solving the problem. So they're really doing scientific research, even though most of the players don't really, are not practicing scientists. The computers versus human paradox, as it were, is ultimately we're, we're going to fold ourselves out of a game. We're here to provide a sort of refinement to the um, folding algorithms that protein servers use to try and do this automatically. As we get better and feed back to the Baker Lab, the automated algorithm for the computers will get better and ultimately we'll be left with nothing to do.